Alright guys, this is AIMCAP. I'm going to be going over a quick demonstration, maybe not that quick, of um, how to use Combat Flight, some of the tools and features that are available. Right here, um, as you'll see, this is just pretty basic map. There's nothing on it just yet. Um, as far as the main map goes, there are multiple options that you have for uh, what you can see. This right here is the Caucus TPC M tiles. There's also Flappy and uh, Bing Aerial. Some of these take a minute to load. And of course when you zoom in then it has to reload. Um, some of these are better zoomed in than others. One of the other issues you'll notice is that uh, some of these won't always show you all of the airfields. Clearly right here you can see all of these. But uh, if you go to another one, like World Topo, I stand corrected. Anyway, um, sometimes it's been hit or miss. Um, different filters may or may not show all of the airfields, so that's something you'll just have to be aware of. Um, if for some reason you're in one filter and you're trying to plop things down and you're not seeing a uh, airfield that you want air aircraft to uh, take off from, then try changing the filter around. Um, Caucus TPC always seems to work as far as Caucus maps goes. They do have theaters, or all three uh, theaters. or all. They've got uh, Normandy, Nevada, and uh, Persian Gulf, and Caucus. So that's always, or they've got all the major theaters that are available as of uh, December, or uh, March 10th, 2019. Also, as a note, this is version 1.0.4.4 is the most recent one that is available right now. When you install it, you'll probably have an outdated version, since I'm in the Help tab. Try going to Check for Update, or go to the uh, the folder where everything extracted to. There's also a manual updater in case this Check for Update doesn't work. I was automatically prompted when I tried to open it. Wing was not. He had to go through and manually do it. So, it's another one of those things that might be hit or miss. Anyway. You'll notice up here in uh, in file, um, in addition to the standard open, save, new, and uh, the change theater that I mentioned, you have a variety of options of things you can do. You can import flights. You can import layers. You can even import missions from uh, DCS or Google Earth files, as well as as well as uh, Elint cartridge or. Uh, Elint data from the Vigan, import uh, cartridges from the Vigan, and a variety of other things. You can also export to mission files or LUA files, Google Earth, all sorts of things. So, uh, TAC view, all that. So you've got a whole lot of whole lot that you can do for free. Over here, um, you can use this to change your coalitions on the fly. Um, I know in the editor for TCS, it's kind of a one and done. You've got one chance to get your coalition right, and if it's not, then you have to restart from scratch. This gives you some, some flexibility, it gives you the opportunity to change something if you, uh, if you screw it up in the editor. It also allows you to type up your briefings. You can auto-generate based off the data that's available on the uh, on the map. 
you can do all the weather static or you can plop it into dynamic and adjust your fog and whatnot and um, you can put in spawn times for the flights you can generate everything when you're done to a knee board or uh, create a data cartridge for Vigan pilots that will automatically have all the QFE calculated and whatnot. You can put down carriers using this. Um, you can obviously add your flights, and I'll get into that more later. Reference points allow you to put in your IP or your CP, uh, mark targets. Mark uh, stuff for your fac, mark CAS info, LZs, whatnot. You can put DPMI reference points down if there's a uh, specific area that you want completely destroyed. Polygon is useful. Um, a few different things you can either mark off. Say there's a uh, a no-fly zone or something like that. You can you can mark that off. Or if you want to mark, designate the uh, enemy AO, then you can use a closed polygon or a closed filled curve to, uh, to select that area. And then uh, when it's done, if you want, you can change how it looks. You can, you know, fill it on the inside. You can you can do all sorts of things. So that's all at your disposal. While you're here, then we can show off the delete. As you can tell, it gives you the option to delete just a point or the entire polygon. Just get rid of that for now. Um, you can also plop circles down. Like say you had a uh, some known SAMs or something like that and you want to mark off their range or something then you can put that down as a uh, visual indicator for their uh, missile range something like that orbits you can create a uh, or mark down an orbit area and also use that um, for say a wax or a refueler when you put the uh, waypoint for one of those aircraft over the orbit then it will automatically start orbiting and it will uh, calculate the amount of time for that specific mission so if you have a uh, an aircraft that's set up to go to the refueler in the orbit and uh, gas up on its way back or or out to the target. They'll calculate about, I think, about 10 minutes for refueling. Something like that, 5-10 minutes. And we'll put that in there. Um, different different uh, orbits are going to be different lengths. You've... Uh, You've got, uh, you know, either hold if you're waiting to uh, set up like a marshalling area or something like that. You can have everything hold till everyone's taken off and sorted. Uh, there's air-to-air -air refueling, cap seed, AWACS, other. There's also overlays that you can put down. Okay, say you have, you know, Google uh, Google Earth image of the actual terrain for that area and you want to overlay it you know over this airport or something like that you can definitely do that info box if you want to mark you know something like russia georgia you can do that ground symbols um just in case you want to mark down Say you've got like, I don't know, 
get some tanks or something like that. Battalion of tanks right there to mark that down. You can change the size of it, increase it, decrease it. You can put down different colors for, for different sides. You know, red for enemy, blue for friendly. I don't even know what else is available. Green for for uh, other allies, yellow for independent, whatever whatever you want to do, you can you can do that. Um, well, um, well, I've got this going. Um, the controls, you know, left click obviously selects it. Right click will will deselect or clear your selection. If you press down on middle mouse, that will pull out your ruler, give you an idea of how big something needs to be or how far something needs to be away for your own planning. And just uh, do that mouse wheel click again to get rid of it. When you do the carrier, it'll give you the option of blue or red, and you can pick whatever aircraft you want or uh, carrier you want and change its orientation into the wind however you want to set it up change the speed tack and id and channel icls all that as far as tools go um i'll give a demonstration of this early or in a little bit but line of sight like say you've got uh, SAMs or something like that, or artillery, or armor or something, or troops, you can put that down on the ground in the editor, and then in here you can click on that target and see what the what the line of sight is. Um, also, what you can do is just a general idea. Say you want to see what you can uh, what's visible from Vaziani, you can pick your point. Probably more like this. You pick your point. Uh, you can do high or low resolution. And um, change your radius, your observer, aircraft, however you want to do it. And then calculate. And it will take a minute. And then all of a sudden, you'll see right here, all the blue lets you see what's in your line of sight from Vaziani Airfield give you an idea of uh, what some of your limitations are as far as what SAMs can see, what uh, people on the ground can see, all that. After that's done, you just clear it out and it's all good. You can also change your opac or opacity, whatever, how opaque it is. And uh, also your your color. Other things that are available are conversions. You can convert altitudes um, or altitude information as far as speed of sound, all that. You can convert from KTAS to alt or to feet. Um, you can convert from metric to imperial and all of that. So you, you're squared away across the board and units of or coordinates can be converted to very easily and copied. You can also do vertical profile. I'll show that later. If you're doing nap of the earth flight or something, that gives you a good idea of what the what the vertical or what the elevation changes will be in your different phases of flight.
and you can also upload everything to the ALE 47 um, if you want to do custom flare and chaff and all that stuff you can you can do that so the other features you can make the map grayscale aside from you know circles and stuff like that you can change the background of the map you can change the how opaque or transparent it is i think no never mind you can show the dog houses or not i'll i'll get more into that later and get an idea of what the terrain along the route is one of the things i didn't get into earlier um you have to do this in a small area otherwise it will take forever or it will yell at you and say no but you can take this terrain and draw this box it will think for a couple minutes of what the terrain looks like in a uh, more readable manner so it's not just looking at squiggles on the map you're actually getting an idea of the peaks and the valleys uh, elevation points all that when you're done looking at the uh, terrain or whatever if you want to Get rid of it, you just press that button again, it goes away. Slope should be fairly similar. I haven't actually used this one before. did that but there you go that does something I don't fully know that's supposed to show if that's you know the brighter it is the more steep it is maybe I don't I don't fully understand so yeah um, you can also set up um, oh your METAR info for whatever airfield and get that all all sent to the voice server so that way if you want to you know listen into that and have all that information broadcasted then it will pass all that along over here you've also got your settings as far as navigation visuals uh, you can change colors for, st for stuff um, Custom call signs. If you want to use a custom briefing picture, you can do that. You can do all your elint info right there. Auto saves, etc. And then here's the uh, the link to the quick start guide and the manual, as well as the update and uh, the about to see what what version you're on. Down here, you've got the option for your different units of measure, whichever presets you want to go with, whatever works best for you. Real quick, uh, what I'm going to do is I will go and import a quick little mission that, uh, that I made in the editor real quick just to show you how all that works. All right, here when you import, it'll ask what you want to bring in. Uh, you, can, you can select as much or as little as you want. Um, just for to show what's going on I will go with everything that's relevant it will change the date if necessary here you can see uh, in Beslin there are uh, SA-10s, SA-8s, there's things plop down. 
And if you look in the missions, you will uh, you'll see that there's all sorts of Russian aircraft missions that are, are flights that are unchecked by checking all these guys. Then all their flight plans will start showing up. And when you when you choose to import this stuff, um, you don't necessarily have to check all that. Like if you want to, you know, for the um, knee boards and stuff, you can remove all of the the Russian flight data as far as you know what their waypoints are and stuff. So that way, you know, they don't have the uh, God's eye view of what's going on. You can just give them you just give them like that and tell them you know, there's a AWACS patrol going around and you know, that's being escorted and they can see that that's, you know, realistically probably all that would be known. They wouldn't know exactly what the flight plan is or anything like that for any enemy units coming in. But just for instructional purposes, plop that down. As you can tell, we've got Russian bombers coming in, being escorted to uh, attack the, uh, the base at... Vaziani doing uh, a couple different attacks. One's cruise missiles, one's going to be uh, doing a uh, bombing run on the runway to just completely deny that airport's ability to conduct business. So, we've also. Um, is it? So, we're going to have. Aircraft going up to intercept and shoot these guys down. As a uh, result of all this AA threat right there, um, they're going to be getting escorted by a couple seed aircraft, which have been. All right, so there we there we go. I think maybe. There we go. Now it's working. All right. So, as you can see, Seed, they'll be taking off, going up there, doing their little uh, Seed cat mission to uh, take out these radar. Be flying back, and then they'll be standby for Cap to to intercept any of the bombers that are uh, interceptors don't shoot down so now all we need to do is uh, put down or get our mission set up for our interceptors go ahead we'll start a new flight and from here you just go Grab some F 15s, put a bunch of uh, AMRAMs on them, and uh, and some some AIM 9s, give them some gas. Yeah, we give them four. Give them four aircraft. Go pick the waypoint. There, you uh, go to your base. We'll just use. Vaziani. Uh, something to note is the, this circle right here. Th what this means is this is the direction that the sun is pointing. Uh, or, uh, sorry, this is the direction right here that the sun's coming from. 
and it's going to be 26 degrees above the horizon. That's just to, uh, for your planning, help you keep that in mind, so that way you're not sending your dudes or yourself uh, flying directly into the sun where you can't see anything. Or for a mission, if you want to come out of the sun to make it harder for the enemy to see you, then uh, you can keep that in mind as well. So... We'll say, um, go ahead, we'll use this as our first waypoint. Um, it'll be kind of the, the marshalling area. Use that, they'll hold there till everyone's squared away. And then, um, from there, send them over there and uh, just start doing a a uh, cat mission so that way uh, they're ready and waiting by the time the bombers come by they should have a good ability to uh, detect everything on radar as it comes around and they're they're uh, more towards the outskirts of the radar field from the uh, SAMs Go ahead, put that on cap. And we'll go take our orbit. Make sure that's on cap. Put that down. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You can you can move it around. Um one thing to keep in mind with the orbits uh, if you if you left click and there's a bunch of stuff in in one area it'll give you the option you can select one of the three or you can select all I'm just gonna click select Charlie delete him try again and take Bravo Take bra Bravo and move that anchor point. So like I was saying, um, these different anchor points do different things. The little one right here, the one that's just a circle, that allows you to move it um, the entire the entire uh, orbit wherever you want it to. This one over here that's shaped like a diamond. If you select that one. That will here. That will allow you to uh, shrink it, stretch it out, change the direction or orientation of it using that other one as the uh, the anchor that will pivot around. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also, if uh, if you take your waypoint and you put it on the the wrong anchor. It, you need to connect these uh, these waypoints to the anchors, but if you do it in the wrong order, then it will shoot you an error down here. I'll uh, give you an example of that real fast. See right down there, it's basically it's saying that we uh, we put it in the wrong anchor so you're gonna have to go back and move it to the correct one so it's going basically in the in the right direction so you're not having to do some crazy turn to get into the uh, right direction of the orbit and then in order to uh, complete the orbit you're gonna need to make a new waypoint by clicking on insert waypoint up there and then you're going to click on the other anchor that will automatically calculate the amount of time it takes you to do an orbit in, uh, you know, the cap orbit. Like I mentioned before, these orbits each take different different amounts of time depending on the uh, the type of orbit it is. 
I know um, refuelers are supposed to take five to ten minutes. I'm not sure how long the AWAX is. I think that just kind of goes on for a long time. I believe you can also change the length of the orbit, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I haven't tried yet. So once you're once you're done with that, you can make your next waypoint go down to wherever. And uh, if you want to have have them go back to Cap Alpha as well, then you can easily do that. And then have them go back to base to to land. Once this is all done, um, you can take all of this and export everything. You know, you can save it first, and then um, here I'll show you what the Elint looks really fast. So you can also go to import Elint. And use this that I got from Q the other day when we were testing it out. And if you've got any uh, Elint data from like a recon run that a Vigan did beforehand or something like that for AA, then you can import that as well. So if you want to do like a, say you did a recon mission beforehand with a Vigan, just to get an idea of where the AA was you know, up here, then you can do that. And depending on how much data the the recon pod got will determine how big that probability box is and how accurate it is. <clears throat> so it might be that the box is just barely bigger than that because it's highly accurate. Or it could be that it's really, you know, for whatever reason, it wasn't able to gather enough data to be super accurate, and it is a box like that big. So it all all depends on um, the flight pattern of the Vigan and uh, what it was able to determine. Also. Um, for these flight plans, if you've got a, um, you know, QFE or whatever, like say you're doing a vegan run, you can click that for uh, for these flight plans, and it will start, you know, giving you all that information for the different waypoints. You can click on. What is it? Right here, show the dog houses. That basically shows you all the information from uh, waypoint to waypoint. So, take off here. It's telling you, you know, just as a visual indicator, you're going 336 for 49 miles, approximately 48 minutes of flight time. That doesn't seem right. And uh, you're going to be at 15,000. And uh, it's, it's like that for each, each leg. So. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, it's saying it'll be taken off. Or it's a nine minute leg. That's going to be a 11 minute, 11 minute leg, and so on and so forth. And you can also turn these off for you know each individual waypoint, or you can turn them off for, um, you know, say you've got like an AI controlled tanker or AWACS where you really don't care because it's just doing an orbit 
and it's already up in the air, then you can just turn those off so they aren't cluttering up your uh, your stuff if you convert it to an eboard. Now, say you've got all this set up, it's exactly how you want, and you want to get a better idea in Google Doc. You can uh, go to File, you can export that KMZ. And then you can, uh, you can go over to Google Earth. You go down to Import. Go to your Google Doc. And in Google Maps, it will give you a nice, pretty little picture. Everything kind of laid out. So, see all your little flights. You can even see them in 3D. Shows them how how high they are in relation to one another. You can tell that dude right here, this uh, SU-24 flight, with all of its info right there. Um, they are screaming, you know, low, low in the earth, especially compared to these guys doing cap. So, if somehow in your mission you knew what the elevations were for the enemy flights, then you could adjust that. Um, this right here give you an idea of how high the uh, the radar coverage is for these SA-10s. So you know if you're able to fly over it or not. Just uh, different things to, to keep in mind. Help with your situational awareness during the planning phase. All that. It also gives you an idea of what some of the terrain looks like. Especially if you're not able to zoom in well enough in the combat flight maps. This will uh, definitely help you get a better idea of what everything looks like and also when all this is done you can export all this to a mission file go back into DCS back into the mission editor go to file and open go to your campaign load it all up and all of a sudden everything that you put in before all your cap orbit data your waypoints all that crap are suddenly right there ready for you to uh, make any final changes make any adjustments and all that so that's just a real quick down and dirty example of some of the things that you can do um, one of the other things that you can do like I had mentioned before is you can turn all this into a uh, an eboard and you can export it you, you all automatically have all your your flight info for whatever so you can set that up accordingly you can print it off if you want to um, make it a PDF you can make it into a doc so that or an image so that way you can import it into your um, your kneeboard for your plane you can even insert it into the file so that way it's all ready to go when you actually get there so it's I'm I'm not gonna go through all this right now because I'm still figuring this out. Uh, you can also export it to Excel. So yeah, that's that's an example of all you can do. Try doing the auto generate feature real fast. See what happens. 
All right, so there we go. It gives you that. It tells you all the sides involved, or all the countries involved in each side, the uh, air bases that are being used by each side. This will, uh, it has all the package info. Real, wow, pair of jugs for Ramrod. That's, that's something. Now we'll get an auto generate for this. And, uh, yeah, so that just gives you a quick overview. You can obviously do far more with this than uh, what I have. I just made something real fast just to show some of the functionality. Um, other things that you can do right here on the side, you can hide or show all the waypoints, all the all the units. If you have cyclones, you can hide or show that. Bullseyes can be hidden. You know, dog houses for all all sides can be shown or hidden. And all the uh, all the info at each waypoint as far as time. Sometimes it'll show location or something like that. Um, yeah, so there we go. Hope that helps. Makes it uh, a little less intimidating or confusing. Uh, I'm sure there's there's tons more to learn. I've just been screwing around with this the last couple of days. So good luck, guys.